So once again, welcome to NPIN's Building a Social Media Campaign Training. Um, during this training, we will be reviewing a few strategies behind social media campaigns, and we have a few different interactive activities for you all to practice your skills. So today's training will be led by Aileen Comey and Victoria Atondo. Also, we do have, as I mentioned, interactive elements. So we will be working on an exercise based on DC Water launching a campaign for users to use less water during the summer. Throughout the training, you'll be taken through each of these sections and how to fill them out. And I will hand our training over to our presenters. Okay, I will kick off. Kick it off. Hi, everybody. My name is Aileen Comey. I am excited to get started with you all um, just to run through what we are walking you through today for social media campaigns. Um, we'll run through basically kind of what they are how to kind of get started on them, key steps for them, how to set up the goals for them, who are your target audiences, how do you set them up, what is the media campaign, the communication tactics that you need, how to develop and execute them, and then to track and measure them. So let's get through all those fun steps. And by all means, stop us at any time if you have any questions, happy to answer them. So first and foremost, the dynamics behind it all is understanding a social media campaign in general. Okay, so what is it? This <laughs> key question. Um, basically, it's a designed creative strategy. It's got a start date and end date. You need to carry this strategy out across specific mediums. Say we're working with a social campaign here. Is it going on Facebook? Is it going on Instagram? Is it going on not Twitter anymore? What are we putting it on to grab the attention that we want? Do we have a desired specific goal for it yet? Do we want brand awareness? Do we want clicks through to our website? What are we really focusing on for said campaign? Do we have a target audience that we want to focus on, a target mod market that we want to focus on? We need to narrow it down to the people and or consumers that our product is designed for. We don't just want to throw it out to the world. We want to really narrow it down. And it's all done through marketing and communications, which is the strongest way to do it. I'm looking at us. So as an example, Smokey Bear is an example of a long running campaign, but they come in many shapes and sizes um, and long, large ones with broad goals. There can be small ones. They can have many audiences. They can have a single audience. It can kind of range from all shapes and sizes, all forms, et cetera. Um, Jake from State Farm can be a campaign. You can really have all types. So there's really not just one template that everybody can run with. But wanted to give you one example just as a, hey, here's what you might recognize. <laughs> and then if you go to the next one, there's also, instead of just one large one that runs across many years, you can also be smart and jump and seize on a moment. For example, this one by the state of Kansas jumped in for COVID-19. A lot of their younger generations were not taking the test and they thought to themselves, okay, what's a way we can reach out to get our younger generation, millennials specifically, to take the test? So they made this great video that maybe we could send around um, after to get people out, to get them to take. It's a free test. It's not like they have to pay for it. And they got a bunch of elder Kansans. I'm from Philly. I don't really know how to say that. So bear with me if I said that wrong. Um, to tough talk younger generations and made it a funny and silly campaign that actually in the end helped double the number of tests taken. I think it went from 
500,000 people taking tests to about a million or so people taking tests. It was really successful. So it was really just jumping on it. What can we do? We need to do it quickly. Let's do it. So it was very fast paced. It's great. So the key steps to creating a campaign, you know what you want to do. What are the steps to do it? Main one, set the goal. What is that specific thing we're working towards? Who is our audience that we want to reach? How do we want to reach them? What channels, what tactics? What do we need to do? What can we develop and execute? And then how can we track, measure, and optimize throughout said campaign that we're working on? So to dive a little bit deeper into that, first, first setting the goal. It's a must. You need to set that goal. And the first thing you have to do is identify the mission of the campaign. What is your objective and purpose? What are you looking to do? Identify the attitude or behavior that you're trying to change. Because once your goal is identified, that's when you can establish the measurements. And the measurements allow you to track how your campaign is doing throughout, which really lets you kind of throughout your start date and end date, figure out, okay, is there anything we need to adjust as we go? And thus I kind of jumped ahead, but whatever your long-term goals and objectives are, KPIs, which are key performance indicators, basically engagements, whether that's likes, comments, shares, reach, how many people are your posts, getting to, or followers, et cetera. Um, how are, can you track them throughout it? Because whatever your end goal may be, you need shorter term KPIs to really help you stay on track throughout your start date and end date. It really helps you track your progress throughout your campaign. All right, so I'll jump back in here. So let's jump into our interactive activity. So Aileen just shared a little bit about setting objectives and KPIs. So going back to, we're gonna practice applying it to our own campaign. So once again, let's pretend we're working with DC Water and we're working to launch a campaign for users to use less water during the summer. So let's hear from the audience. What do you think are some objectives for this campaign? Also. Aileen and Victoria, feel free to jump in with some of your thoughts or any questions that you help you think can help guide us. Almost Friday, but would love to hear voices. Less water during the summer. So take note that it's the summer. Feel free to drop your answers in the chat as well. Can't see the chat, I'm so far chat. So I'm gonna try to reach that. And for those who might need a reminder of, you know, what your objectives can be, you can always have an awareness campaign. Do you want to create more? awareness of an issue? Do you want to generate more leads or um, signups for updates? All of these are valid objectives that any campaign can have. Um, it can also be about engagement. Maybe you have a really interesting piece of information you want to share with your audience. So feel free to take inspiration from those and, and how you can measure how they would be successful. So we have one idea here. Um, Libby says, limit watering lawn or garden or using rain barrels instead. Great idea. Great objectives. All right, so I'm going to jump back into the presentation and hand it back over to you all. 
Okay. Well, another key thing for campaigns is defining your target audience. Like I had hinted at before, we don't really want to just throw campaigns out to everybody. You really need to identify who you are reaching out to. So what is a target audience? Your target audience is a specific group of consumers, aka the people you should, who should be seeing the campaign, see the, what you're working on. Um, but what are they exactly? Or is it a specific age? Is it a specific gender? Is it people all with a specific type of interest? Once you kind of do the research and identify, okay, this is the specific type of group that we're reaching out to, you'll know kind of, okay, this is the type of content, this is the type of copy, this is the type of visuals and videos, et cetera. It'll help you be able to shape the campaign that you want to put together. And then it's really key to understand your target audience. Yes, you have identified who they are, but research needs to be done before your campaign can really begin. You need to know the mindset of your audience, including motivators and barriers impacting their behavior. So the what you want to say and how you want to say it. And then the media consumption and communication preferences and behaviors. So the where you want to say it. Their mindset will really kind of drive you and the media consumption and communications will help you determine the right channels where to say it. All right, jumping back to our activity. Also, we had another response for objective and KPIs. Nellie says to give people goals, such as use X percent less water per month. I like it, Nellie. Now let's move into our next step, identifying our audience. So in this campaign for using less water during the summer, who do you think is our target, target audience? Who should we be speaking to? Little children. Any specific age range or? Yeah, when you think of water consumption, people who might use a lot of water, what audience first comes to mind? Oh, we have homeowners mm -hmm. in the chat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Look at the description with what type of water. Where is the location? Mm -hmm. People who wash their cars. So let's get a little more detail. Oh, we have Nelly who mentioned it would be adults um, who decide when the sprinkler may go on as an example. Perfect. I was just about to ask, can we give an age range to this target audience now? Yeah. Definitely. Another thing you can think about is geo, geo area. It's DC water. So you can also do specific area. These are great. Yeah, these are awesome. And I want to challenge you all a little bit too to think about um, channels to reach these audiences on. What social media platforms are you likely to see homeowners or people who wash their cars? Oh, and then for audience, we also have people who are customers of DC Water. Definitely. Thanks for that one. So 
Oh, we have a question. Is Nextdoor a social media platform? Question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can jump in on that one. Um, yes, Nextdoor <laughs> is considered a social media platform. Yeah, and in fact, it say. allows for um, paid campaigns as well. So depending mm -hmm. on the type of service or messaging that you might be trying to get out for your audience, it could be an excellent source. In this case, particularly, um, I think it's a great idea to consider Nextdoor. Thanks, Victoria. Thanks for All right, as any more ideas come in, feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll continue moving forward. All right, so then that means it's my turn to jump in. Um, hi everyone, I feel like I didn't get a chance to say hello at the beginning of the presentation, but you've heard me uh, pitching a little here and there in the, um, in the little, uh, exercise sections, but my name is Victoria Tondo. I am a social media manager and content creator um, here. So it's just trying to give a little bit of context onto the next sections of our establishing a social media campaign um, training. So now the next section is gonna to be to decide the channels and tactics that you want to use for your campaign. Okay, so first of all, you need to decide your communication channels. And one of the things that I think it's very important to mention is, and the reason why getting to know who and where your audience is, is so important is because it determines the type of um, content, we're gonna call it content, or assets that you need to create, where they should live, and the kind of communication channels that you should tap into. Um, the key to a successful campaign is to meet your audience where they are. You don't want to just put the information out there in the world and hope that the person you're trying to reach finds them. You want to make sure that it is as accessible as possible. And your distribution strategy can impact a variety of factors, like how much time do you have to promote um, your messaging? Uh, do you have any marketing spending dollars to set up a paid campaign? And how far um, you have to reach your audience? So all of these factors can affect your communication channels if the campaign is going to be through email, uh, social platforms, video, TV, or traditional um, media. All of these are things that you need to consider when you are creating a campaign. All right, next. Okay, so now we've been talking a lot about your audience. And again, at the end of the day, they are the, the key essence of your, of your campaign. They are the ones that we are creating all of this for. So you need to take into consideration where are um, this audience members or this potential audience um, spending their time in. So, you know, you, there's different content formats that you need to keep in mind and the, and the different platforms that are to your um, reach. Like we were mentioning in the comments next door is not usually considered a very popular social media platform. But in the particular case that we were talking about, it would be a great opportunity because we're talking about targeting homeowners of a special, a specific age group, probably, I don't know, I'm going to say 35 to maybe 50. Um, so it looks like that would be a place where a lot of homeowners would be. So when you are trying to settle um, and to determine what social media platform you want your campaign to live in, you have to take into consideration all of those variables. So what is the age group? If you're going to be um, targeting, you know, young adults between 21 and, and 35 years old, you probably won't be looking for them in Nextdoor or um, some people might even say nowadays Facebook. You want to make sure that you are reaching them in places like Snapchat or um, Twitter, I mean, TikTok or Instagram, places where a lot of them are going to be located. The same goes for, you know, young professionals. Maybe you want to have a very, um, you're doing a hiring campaign and you want to have access to professionals. You wouldn't be advertising that or you wouldn't be putting your campaign on, uh, let's say, Snapchat. You would definitely be doing it on LinkedIn. So just considering all those factors that are going to affect how your campaign is being perceived when you are setting up and determining what, what platforms you want to utilize. Um, and also you have to keep in mind the tone and the style, making sure that you are using messages that resonate with the audience that you're trying to target, and then you're using language and a communication style that is gonna resonate with them. 
All right, next slide, please. Okay, so now you need to choose your campaign tactics. So we have determined where we want to put our message out, right? We have our platforms or our um, communication strategies. So now we have to do our campaign tactics. Um, planning your tactics will help your campaign reach its goals. So the tactics are the specific actions or steps that you're gonna take in order to accomplish the goals for your strategy. So for example, um, you might want to you know, do an awareness campaign and you want to um, you know, set, you want to make sure that people become aware of the specific tap water or a specific messaging. So in order to achieve this, you would use tactics, tactics such as like radio, billboards, posters, um, organic social media or paid social media to spread the word to a large population, right? So the tactics of your campaign can be can range from like the platforms that you choose to broadcast this campaign to the formats of the actual pieces uh, and content that you want to uh, use to reach these people. Next slide, please. All right. So once we have selected our platforms and our um, and our type of content that we need to create, you need to start thinking as to how is it gonna live in these platforms? So you said, okay, I want to do an email campaign that it's also going to have a video component um, and an organic social component. I want it to live obviously on let's say Facebook and YouTube because there's video to it. Uh, you need to start determining how that's gonna look like. With that in mind, you have to choose your platforms and also, uh, make sure that you're keeping into in mind those KPIs that we mentioned earlier. So if you want to take people from the piece of content into a website to sign up for alerts, um, which platform is going to allow for that more easily? Or if you want to, you know, keep them engaged in long format video, you would select that. You would select YouTube over, for example, um, Instagram Reels or TikTok. However, if what you want is as many eyes as possible in a very short amount of time, then you will select short form video. So that's where the type of messaging and the type of content you want to create and the platform that you're trying to select come into play. And when you start kind of um, taking away any extra things that might distract from your campaign. All right, next. Okay, so now we know where, we're, where we want the content to live. Now we have to think about format. So we talked about the types of video, if you're gonna use short form or long form video, if you're gonna do paid social ads, um, if it's gonna be a live stream or a blog series, um, choosing the, the format of the content that you're going to create becomes very important when you start thinking about um, what is going to engage your audience the most. So with that in mind, choosing your format based on how you know your audience consumes information becomes very important. You wanna make sure that you are meeting them at places or in this case with content that they are already engaging in. So if you are targeting a group of teenagers that spends a lot of time on Snapchat, adding a, a video ad on Snapchat would be more effective than doing a static image pay social ad on Facebook. So just learning and, and figuring out where your audience is located and what type of content they are interacting with, um, it's one of the most important parts of this, uh, one, one of the most important factors of this part of the process of, of creating a campaign. All right, next. Oh, we've reached the exercise section again. Yes, perfect. So now, thank you for taking us through that, Victoria. So we've learned more about the different channels, tactics, and formats. So coming back to our campaign for the DC Water, for DC Water, and we've identified, we'll be talking to homeowners about, um, what do we say, limiting how much water they use. So what channels do you think we'll use? And what format? of content do you think would resonate best? So we mentioned one with next door already. Are there any others? And if we are to move forward on next door, what would be the best format?
What do people think about LinkedIn? I just threw one out there. Yay, nay. That's a good one. What about Pinterest? People's minds do for a little bit longer. <laughs> then I think, Eileen, maybe um, we can also jump in and kind of like give with this um, this little bit of a of a scenario, uh, what we would probably do, maybe, maybe that can help some folks kind of get those <laughs> ideas flowing. Yeah, I was going to do just that, get out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> I know, because I, I can't resist uh, a scenario. So I was already taking a couple of notes here and there. <laughs> I'm waiting, Nellie, in the Tissy Water. It's likely followed by many of its checking for outages. Absolutely. Okay. That, is a, that, that is a great option, Nelly. Leveraging uh, an existing follower base, it's also a great opportunity um, because at the end of the day, a lot of the spreading and the awareness that happens on social media is done through sharing. Um, and if mm -hmm. current users that have friends that they know that are also users of DC Water, they might be seeing these assets and sharing them with their neighbors or other friends and kind of spreading that message for you. Mm -hmm. And if it's an adult um, target audience, I would definitely say Facebook done. LinkedIn maybe, but it's more businessy. So may, I, we could put it up there maybe, but it wouldn't be my first choice. Um, I was throwing it out there just to see if we could get some combo going, but I would say Facebook, Twitter, Nextdoor definitely. Um, Hmm. Instagram is a younger base, but it's getting, I'm reading. And I think um, Sakia made a, an interesting recommendation with Pinterest because one of the most important things about Pinterest is it functions as a visual search engine, right? So we have mm -hmm. a lot of people that are homeowners looking for um, homemaking ideas or home repairs. So maybe a, a series of paid opportunities on Pinterest that are tied to those type of searches could be a good idea um, mm -hmm. to get more eyes on on the campaign that that targets particularly homeowners um, within the area. And blogs would be great. The more attention you can get, better. Yeah, but I was just going to say, Nellie just dropped a few suggestions, also um, saying local blogs and then um, campaigns and utility bills as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like the utility bills come really in handy when you're talking about messaging points. Um, and I think we're going to talk a little bit about <laughs> the, the, the content of, of your, um, the assets that you use for this campaign, but uh, you want to meet your audience in a place where they are already interested. So if we're talking about utility bills, maybe reducing usage would lead to lower utility bills, right? So it's a great incentive that you can use um, as a messaging point. Awesome. But for that, I would say that would be on the next section. So maybe <laughs> way. <laughs> that was a nice segue. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to talk a little bit about developing and executing your campaign. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about creatives. I think this is most people's favorite part of <laughs> starting a campaign, which is actually thinking about what it's gonna look like, what it's gonna say. Um, 
depending on the format and the platforms that you have selected, you can, can select uh, different forms of creative, such as imagery, photographs, illustration, graphics, um, you know, even video, film, animations, GIFs, you can use copy or messaging, um, music, you can do voiceovers on different forms of um, media, and as well as digital experiences. So now one of the things that you want to keep in mind when you're selecting the type of creative, um, it's going to be the, the type of platform that you're gonna be using. And yeah, we can go into the next slide. All right, so, you know, there are many, many things <laughs> that can go um, very well when you're starting to think about creative. But if you want to keep in mind some of the things that might make your campaign a little bit not executable, some common execution obstacles that can happen at this point are overestimating your team's capacity. So sometimes when we start thinking about creative, we can start, um, you know, kind of, uh, just over imagining a little bit and saying things like, oh, well, we can do a series of seven videos that are going to talk about the experiences of DC water users when we might not have a capacity internally in your team to execute that. Maybe thinking about scaling it, like the scale to be corresponding to the amount of um, capacity that your team has is one of the things you wanna keep in mind. Also overly complicating the concept. <laughs> Again, you know, we, I think when you are in the, in the ideation facet of execution and production, you definitely want to think big, but also taking into consideration your budget, your team's capacity, um, access to res resources. You want to make sure that with the big idea in mind, you can scale that to meet your team's needs and abilities. Um, also, you know, if you are starting too big, you can also start too small. Maybe you are not venturing enough outside of the boundaries of what you could do. Um, and a lack of creativity can result in a lack of interest or an engagement from your audience. So I always recommend I'd rather start big and scale down than having to, you know, rethink a concept later down the road. Um, scheduling, it's also a big component here. And make sure that you are taking into consideration the time that it takes to create um, and produce creative content. Uh, sometimes we can underestimate the amount of time that some edits happen. Always, always a lot for time for edits. I always talk about that because sometimes we can think, well, my creative team is going to be able to have it done by this date and we can publish the day after. But sometimes someone along the line, someone who needs to approve the messaging might be like, you know what, I don't think this is the right way to go. Why don't we try something else? And then, you know, a lot of other things might be falling out of timeline for you that can cost you more in terms of budget or time. So always keep in mind um, your schedule. And lastly, your budget, you know, know how much you are able to utilize in terms of time and monetary budget for the production and execution of your campaign. All right, next slide. Okay, so now we're gonna go into tracking and measure. All right, let's go into the next section. All right, so we created the creative. Um, we have our audience in mind. We have selected our platforms. We have our goals and objectives. And we have finally published a piece of our campaign. So now what happens? So you want to make sure that you are keeping track of the performance of any assets that you have put out there, whether that is, you know, um, monitoring the metrics such as how many engagements each piece has had. If it's in, you know, your traditional digital social media uh, platforms, maybe you have a link that you are tracking link clicks. Um, if you are trying to get more awareness and kind of like adoption of your campaign. How much are these posts being shared? How much traffic is it directing to your website? So you wanna make sure that you are keeping an eye on these things because one of the things that often we forget to remember is that we can always pivot a little. We might not be able to go back to square one to rethink who our audience is when we have already invested so much time and budget into created this campaign, but we can always 
adjust the delivery and the strategy. Maybe um, you have already published uh, three of five creative assets that you're going to post online. And you realize that a certain way of wording um, the action that you want from your audience, it's not really resonating. Well, now you are still in time to test a different kind of copy to increase those um, those results in, in the second part or the next part of your campaign. And now let's say we have gone along, we had a campaign that was going to be, we're just going to say two weeks long, we're going to make it a short campaign. And you are starting to gather all the metrics of what you, um, what you have generated from this campaign. Now you want to make sure that you are getting all of your metrics, even if you are not planning on utilizing some of them. And the reason why is because uh, some certain metrics can help you gain insight into others. So from your impressions, you can see why maybe um, your engagements were a little bit lower than you expected. Um, and you know, having all of these metrics in mind are able to give you a lot of more insight into not just the success of the current campaign, but any future campaigns you might have. So um, if you run any paid promotions, always use you know, your cost per mile. Um, for those who are not familiar with the term, that means cost per thousand impressions. So just having an idea of how much the cost per thousand impressions and the cost per click was for the campaign can help you set up a budget for a future campaign. So that's why I always recommend, you know, you always want to have more data than um, you think. <laughs> so if you're able to gather, you know, um, I know that sometimes when you're utilizing video, uh, you might want to have, you know, just, oh, I, I'm just interested in seeing like how many people view it how many shared it and how many comments we got on that video. But sometimes the click-through rate or the watch-through rate might be um, a, a good piece of information to have because that will determine if the video was engaging enough to keep uh, the audience enticed and attend to the piece of content through the duration of it and if your whole message went through. And if it didn't, it might provide some insight as to how you need to create your videos the next time or for the next campaign. All right, next slide. Okay, so now um, we have uh, my mapping your KPIs. So there is what we call a social metrics map, right? Based on your buyer's journey or your audience's journey, um, there are different metrics that will tell you how your campaign did throughout this process. So for awareness metrics, you measure reach, impressions, and brand mentions. So that means how is your audience becoming aware of your messaging? Now, from there, you can go into engaging. So how did your audience engage with that content? And you would analyze things like likes, comments, shares, and overall interactions. And lastly, your conversion metrics. So how did that turn into an actual action from your um, audience? Did that translate into, you know, more subscriptions, clicks to a website with more information, uh, maybe signing up for um, notifications. So depending on the type of campaign, again, when you're setting up your goals at the beginning of the campaign, that's when you start thinking about what metrics you're going to be uh, tracking, right? If you know that you want to run an awareness campaign, you just want the largest amount of people possible to know about a piece of information, Th that would determine the kind of metrics you would um, keep track of. The same goes for, uh, you know, um, adoption campaigns or conversion campaigns where you want to make sure that you are creating or generating leads, sales, or subscriptions. All right, next slide, please. Okay, and lastly, you know, once you have completed your campaign and you have gathered all of your beautiful data, um, now it's the time to get back with your team and with everyone who was involved in the campaign and start thinking about what were the learnings from this campaign? Uh, did you achieve your objective? Were you able to meet the KPI goals that you've set for yourself and for the campaign? Um, if you did so, how did, um, if, you, if you did so, did it exceed it by much or if it underperformed? What could have gotten us to meeting the goal? Uh, what was done right? What things did we see that were like 
high above expectation. Maybe you got a lot of shares more than you were expecting. And you're thinking, oh, maybe it was because people thought that this particular form of content was going to be helpful for their friends. So there's a lot of things that we can learn from asking where are the highlights of our results? Where are the lowlights of our results? Um, what were the, the challenges? Again, you might see, I don't know, maybe there was a, um, a higher cost per click that you didn't you imagine. So that determines what can you do differently in the future? Uh, what are the key takeaways of the campaign? What can you improve on your next campaign? And what are the next steps for it? So maybe the campaign did so well that you want to do a second round. And now with all the learnings that you have, you're able to make decisions that are informed and based on the data that you have collected and that are more likely to succeed in the future. You can also learn here with reaching your like long-term goal that you set up at the very beginning that I had talked about. Okay, well, the shorter term goals that we track during the campaign, do those need to change for the next campaign? Did we focus on the wrong ones? Do we need to focus on a different one next time? Um, it's just different kind of things you can figure out. Sure. Absolutely. Interesting. And as I always say, sometimes you need um, to give your campaign a little bit of room to breathe and do its thing and gather the data and see um, in order to fully determine if it was successful or not. I feel like sometimes we can jump the gun and, and try to start thinking like, is this doing well within the first 48 hours of posting an acid? And you're like, okay, we need to <laughs> take a little bit of a step back and, and, and let the content do its thing. And then we can, we can determine that. True statement. All right. Oh, have we already reached the end of our presentation? It looks, it looks like we have. Okay. <laughs> if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the chat. Um, Eileen Zaki and I would be happy to, to answer any questions you might have. Right. Okay, so we have our first question. How is the collapse of Twitter affecting such campaigns? It oh, has. Nelly. <laughs> you go for it, you. I step back. It has <laughs> been a ride to be yeah. in social media in the last couple of months, especially when you have clients that um, their platform is largely on X, formerly Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. I think we're currently doing a lot of playing it by ear because mm -hmm. so many updates have been coming out every week. It's not even a matter of, you know, um, Instagram updates their platform and algorithm every couple of months or so. With Twitter is one day you wake up and you find out that now there's a paywall to see over a certain amount of tweets. Um, and that does affect the, the amount of engagement that you get in your post. And it sometimes, it has come to the point where a couple of, um, you know, accounts might be wondering if, if there's even a point in still being on the platform. So mm -hmm. all I can say right now is that it's a lot of playing it by ear and seeing how the particular audience of your campaign reacts to it. And with certain clients, it's also a matter of, well, just know that your competitors are going through the same thing too. You know, it's all of mm -hmm. Twitter who's going through it right now with the constant changes. So whether it's moving things to other platforms, whether it's sticking through it and adapting as you can, um, it's, it's social. Social is constantly changing. Yes, Twitter specifically right now, but I mean, meta. I'll leave it at that was the last yes. thing for this. So it's constantly adapting and it's really just making sure you're always on your toes, ready to move along with it. And one of the things that I would recommend at this point um, to accounts that are predominantly on the X or Twitter space is to start trying to build your followers or trying to migrate some of your followers 
to another one of your popular platforms. So let's say your second most um, followed account is on Facebook. How can you redirect some of them to Facebook? How can you um, kind of like grow that follower base a little bit in case of something that no longer permits you to stay on the platform happens? Do we have any more questions? Uh, not in the chat or Q&A right now. Thanks for your answer. I'll give about a few more minutes to see if we have any other questions. All right, looks like that's it. Um, so we'd like to thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we will be posting this training on the NPIN site. And yeah, thank you again. And thank you for your time, Aileen and Victoria. Oh, thank you all. Happy Thursday. Thank you, everyone. Have a, Have great, a great day. Have a great day.